Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I'll be providing my book review of the book Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. This uh, is my third time reading through this book. I read it the first time right at the end of 2019 going into 2020, and then I read it uh, in August of last year, and uh, then I just, just read it in August of this year. However, last year I read like two-thirds of it, in audiobook and then did the last third in print because I lost because the audiobook you know was running it or not running it I was borrowing it from a library and my time was up this time I was consistently made sure I had read it every day in the audiobook and I was able to get through it all in the audiobook and so I did it all via audiobook but I'm going to use the physical copy since that's what I have of it and Every single time I've read this book, I've loved it even more. I've loved it for different reasons. So I'm going to start out discussing some kind of spoiler-free things about it and then get into spoilers later on because this is just such, a, such an important book to me. I would put this as, no joke, my number two favorite novel of all time. My number one favorite novel of all time is also a Brandon Sanderson novel, which is Elantris. I know that's kind of bold to have two novels by a single author as your favorite books of all time, but I genuinely love both of these two books. They, they're, just, they're just amazing. So uh, let me start out talking about spoiler-free thoughts. Warbreaker is a book that follows three main characters. You have Ciri, who is the crown princess, or not crown princess, the princess of... Uh, of uh, Idris, and she is uh, the youngest princess. Then you also follow her sister, Vivenna, who is the oldest princess. And then you follow um, uh, this kind of mysterious sword fighter named Vasher. And it, it kind of goes between the three of them. And then there's also a fourth perspective, which is uh, Light Song, who is uh, a returned god. And I'll get into that in just a moment. In this book, the, the people of Halandrin have this god system where they have several gods who have come back to life and they are the returned and they are the gods. And the head of the gods is the god king. And the deal that uh, Idris made with Halandrin, the, co the, capital, or the country of Idris made, was that the oldest, uh, was that the oldest daughter, of the, the daughter of the queen on her 22nd birthday would go down and marry the god king. However, because of some legal snafu, the king decides to send his youngest daughter instead of his oldest daughter to the god king. And so Ciri, the youngest, is sent. And Vivenna, who was trained her whole life to go down and marry the god king, is not allowed to marry him. And she is meant to stay home. Vivenna doesn't like this. And she goes to go join her sister. And not join her sister, but to free her sister. And chaos ensues. And that's where the book goes. And then you have Light Song, who is a returned god in the court of gods, seeing everything happen on the political scale. And he doesn't believe in his own divinity. And so the book is about him arguing with his priests who are worshiping him, but he doesn't believe in himself. And then you have Vasher, who has some mysterious reasons for his doings in the book. And those are the different perspectives that we're following. And each and every perspective is unique and interesting. And every time I've read this, the first time I read this, my favorites by far were Siri and Susebrin. And every time I read this, I always love reading them. The second time through, I really was impressed by Vivenna and her plotline. This time, I was really impressed by Lightsong and his plotline. So there's, there's something really deep and rich about each of the plotlines here. And so it... There isn't really much action. The book only gets into action in about the last hundred pages. But this is one of those books where it's okay that it's such a slow burn because it's all political maneuvering and it's all prep work and setting the chess pieces and all that stuff. And it works out really well. This is a book that I find, found, always find myself invested in. I, even though I've read it before, I had to know what happens to Siri. I had to know what happens to Vivenna. And I had to know what happens with Lightsong. I was connected with all of them. Every character, even the minor characters in this book, I found some sort of connection to. And then there are also some mercenaries in this book, who uh, Denth and Tongfa, who are absolutely hilarious. They are the comic relief of this book, but they are some of the best comic relief ever because they're so serious about their jokes. Like, 
they are genuinely believe what they're saying and what they're, they're saying is absolutely hilarious. So I really like reading this book. That's my spoiler free thoughts. Now I'll get into my spoiler thoughts. First of all, the betrayal in this book when Denth and Tonk Fa betray Vivenna is one of the most gut-wrenching betrayals in any book because Sanderson did a good job of making you believe that they were on her side. All of the things Denth is telling her that they need to do to keep the war going, all of the times he complains about being a mercenary and tries to look better, all the times that he gives her advice and is kind to her when no one else is, really endears you to Denth. And Tong Fa is just joking all the time. And the way that he has this jovial attitude really throws you off. So when it turns out they've been working for the enemy all along, they've been working for those who, who wish to have a war between Halindrin and Idris, it's just so heartbreaking. And I really appreciated that. I also really appreciate Light Song's uh, realization about his divinity and also his decision to do something with his life. He doesn't just realize his divinity and keep going. He decides, I'm going to help the God King. And that moment is wonderful. And the whole journey of Siri meeting Susebrin, getting to know who he is, actually falling in love with this man who was supposed to be kind of her captor husband, really takes takes uh, like a classic type story and completely flips it on its head. It's a really, really endearing sto love storyline. And then the book has such an abrupt ending that I'm always like, I need a sequel, I need a sequel, I need a sequel, I need to know what happens to Ciri and Susebrin. I need to see, we kind of know where Vasher and Vivenna go through the Stormlight Archive, but I need to see what happens in this world because the magic system here of the colors is great. The language used to describe everything is great. And the fact that there's curse words or things like colors, I just love when you just have characters go, colors, colors, colors. Um, I, I just thought that was always interesting. I also really liked um, uh, the way Vasher, it turns out he's Kalad the whole time, and yet he feels like he has to atone for his sins. He has to atone for the death and destruction that he brought, which is why he is so cold and why he is so uh, harsh with Vivenna. I really liked reading all of that. Getting into some of the deeper themes, um, I'll start with uh, Light Song. Light Song has to do with religious themes. Light Song does not believe his own divinity but his priests do believe it. And there's also a realization that if he doesn't believe his divinity, his followers might not believe it. And so the priests would lose their power among the people. And so there is an incentive to keep Light Song believing his, his, uh, his divinity so that the priests can continue to remain powerful. There is also this interesting religious discussion of what, what kind of faith is necessary to start your religion. Um, uh, do you actually, does everyone have to believe it? Uh, does everyone involved have to be fully, fully embracing it? There's questions there that the book really likes to delve and explore. Then you also have the political maneuverings. He is a naturally apathetic person, but he starts to care throughout the book, Light Song does. And the fact that you have this political maneuvering of you cheer for the people of, ha of Idris throughout the whole book. But what you realize is that the people of Halindrin aren't necessarily bad. It's just that there are people manipulating the people of Halindrin to be bad. And those people are the Pon Kal. And it's interesting how the Pon Kal appear to be the lowly servants. They appear to be the downtrodden people. And yet they're the ones that rise up and try to start this war between Halindrin and between Idris. And it shows you that sometimes maybe the most pompous, arrogant person isn't the biggest enemy that you'll face. Maybe the biggest enemy is the person who could replace you. And so there's, there's political undertones throughout this book. There are also undertones about marriage and the purpose in society. You know, the, there, there is a very firm and very firm conviction from Vivenna about what she believes uh, a good woman of Idris should do and a believer uh, in that faith. And so whenever she has to do something that is challenged by it, she is so judgmental. And by the end of the book, she realizes, hey, maybe I can still hold on to my faith without being so judgmental. It is a great way to explore that. 
you also at the same time have Siri who realizes that maybe you need to pay attention because people, uh, adults are prepping you for the world. You know, Vivena has all this training, but Siri goofs off during the training. Siri never paid attention. And, and really, Siri even didn't even get all the training. And so Siri is thrust into this position. No, no pun intended. Uh, she's thrust in this position, and she doesn't really know what to do, and she has to make do with what she has. And throughout the whole book, the whole first half of the book, it's constantly Siri saying, Vivenna would have done so much better. Vivenna would have done so much better. And then the second half of the book is her saying, I'm so glad I did this. Vivenna wouldn't have been able to do this because she finally believes in herself and finally is convinced that maybe she has a purpose here. You know, when her father sends her away, it's very heartbreaking because you see the love he has for Vivenna and the detachment that he has for Siri. Both are his daughters, yet he loves one so much that he reneges on his promise and sends the other. And yet you realize maybe it was for the best because Ciceri makes the best out of the situation. And at the beginning of the book, Vivenna is so angry that he makes this decision that she feels she has no purpose. And yet by him making this decision, she goes down to Halandrin and she's given a purpose to try to stop the war. There is just incredible themes that are built from just the beginning of the book all the way through the book. And it just, it just all worked together in a really cohesive manner for me. I absolutely loved the, the dialogue throughout the book, the political storylines. I loved the whole plot. It is a slow burn that actually works. I loved the action at the end. I thought it was really easy to follow. I also felt bad for a lot of the priests that were innocently murdered. And I had, the first time I read this, had no idea that Bluefingers was the bad guy. I mean, I just had no clue. I thought it was Trelides. I was sure it was Trelides. And so the fact that Trelides was actually kind of a good guy and Bluefingers was the bad guy was just brilliant. And I also thought that the way that that we connect with Susebrin and we just, we have this difficulty of, we want Siri and Susebrin to be happy and part of their happy marriage would be consummating it. But we also don't want Siri to get pregnant because there's a chance that they could kill her and Susebrin once she has the baby. So the audience is left in this very precarious position of cheering and not cheering for them to finally get together. And it's a really interesting look at marriage and really interesting look at political power because he, Susebrin is the god king, yet he's really a puppet god king. And so Ciri is the queen, but really she holds no power and she has to go through others. And I also loved how the whole book, Blushweaver, is trying to seduce Lightsong and Blushweaver fails every time. And yet Light Song, you realize, has feelings for Blushweaver, but he doesn't believe it's right to act on those feelings. And I just loved all of those themes put together. It was just everything in this book meshes so well. So that is my rambling review of Warbreaker. I love this book. So if you've read this book, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. And until next time, I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.